These are the open position major seven chords. Here's A major seven. So instead of two, two, two for an A, it's gonna be two, one, and two. So the one is on the G string, the third string. That's A major seven. Now if we look at a D chord here, if we make this all twos down in the bottom, that's a D major seven. If we look at a C chord, we take this one out and make it an open. That's a C major seven. A G major seven could be played a few different ways. You could also take that three out, just like you can when you play a G chord. You can have it just be one three down there. So you could also do it like that, but with just one two. And we kind of mute the A string on that. So that's a G major seven. Here's an F major seven. Instead of barring the first fret on these bottom two strings, you can have that bottom string open. So it's three, two, one, and open. F major seven. A major seven. D major seven. C major seven. G major seven. Or with that three on the second string. F major seven. Another shape would be to take this A major seven and make that a movable shape. So B major seven would be two, four, three, four, two. C major seven, etc. Moving on up. Now if we look at this little D major seven shape, that becomes movable too. So O two 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 becomes one three three three. Now we can take this one, we can make a big open E major seven here. By going open, two, two, four, four, four. Now there's some other shapes for major seven, like this one. Five, four, two, two, two would be a D major seven. And see, that's based off that C major seven shape. You just make all these movable things. So if you look at the F major seven, that one becomes this thing. It's like a staircase. And whatever the bass note is, that's what the name of the major seven chord is. So that's an A note, so this is an A major seven chord. And look how it's very close to an A major chord. This happens to be the root note. You take that back one, it's also the eight note as well as the one note, right? So you take that back and that's the major seven right there. So you've added a major seven into the major chord. So let's look at a couple of examples of famous tunes that use the major seven chord. Uh, Rain Song by Led Zeppelin comes to mind. This is a regular major chord, G. Then you hear this different sound of that major seven chord. So he went from major to major seven, and then when he took that major seven down, that's a flat seven, so that's like a dominant seven. So that's a G dominant seven right there, so major. Major seven, seven. Now chords like this are interesting because this chord right here by itself is like an E flat, but it has a G bass. So that's where you would see E flat slash G, because the slash means you have a different bass note than normal, and that's the G bass note in this case. Then. They get into that one now. This is like a D chord down here, but it has a G bass. So it went from like an E flat slash G to a D slash G. Okay, so next example is gonna be uh, Pink Floyd from Time. Here we go, major seven. D major seven, A major seven. C minor seven, C sharp minor seven, B minor seven. Okay, so that was the D major seven used in that song to the A major seven. Went back and forth a few times. And then we brought in a minor seven for C sharp, C sharp minor seven. We're gonna get into the minor sevens here in a second. We have one more example for uh, a major seven chord. Think of Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers. That 
seven there. That's another major seven chord. So in this case, it's the seven, nine, eight, nine, seven. Okay, so we'll move to these minor sevens. So like I said, that was a minor seven from that previous tune, the Pink Floyd one. So say if we take this up to the fifth fret here, I'm going to give you an example of a Doobie Brothers tune. Long train running. So what they're doing there is they're hammering on from like a C chord with a D bass kind of thing. They're just hammering real quick into this D minor seven, five, seven, five, six, five. Okay, here's another example, and I like to relate it to this chord to get, show you the difference between the two sounds. So this is that Long Train Run and Doobie Brothers. It has that power chord note in it, that fifth. Now look at, let's take this up to E, let's look at Josie by Steely Dan. This does not have kind of this grounding note, this power chord note. They take that out and they play it like this. It's much more spacious and kind of open as opposed to be really like heavies, you know, grounded, like I say. It has a lot of like, that's like jazz chords, they leave out that fifth a lot because they want it to be more spacious and kind of free sounding. So, so that'd be like the seventh fret on the A string, and then you have like a D shape on these bottom strings down here like this, but you have to play it with these other fingers. Versus. Now they call this one uh, minor seven, no five, if you wanted to be technical with that. Okay, so that's a couple examples there. Here's another example. So that's So What by Miles Davis. He's also kind of using that D minor seven chord there. Now the horns are hitting this. And I have a trivia question for you. What other song got their riff from this bit from So What? by Miles Davis. And so to play that, you know, I'm just sliding these this D chord up. So in that song, they just go up a half step a little bit and then they come back.